My name is Dan Veal and you are watching Base Gear Magazine. And in my introduction, you heard the Trace Elliott 1x10 Elf Combo. This combo makes up part of a range including a small 200 watt head that we are going to look at in another review, a 1x8 combo and a array of cabinets that as a modular setup can take you from small practice to out to the gig with a really good looking and great sounding setup. In my review today, I'll be looking at some of the specifications and of course, some of the sounds that we can get out of the Elf combo. And at the end of the review, of course, I'll wrap up and give you some of my thoughts as well. So let's not waste any time. Let's get in and have a look at the controls and the sounds that we can get from the 1x10 Elf combo. Around the back of the combo, we have a set of controls and they are facing upward, which is brilliant because when the combo is down on the floor, we can just look down and see exactly where each of our control knobs are. Each of them are black and they have a small white dot on them. So even on a darker stage, we can pretty much make out where we are with our settings if we need to tweak anything mid performance. Speaking of the controls, and I'm gonna just bring up an image so you can see, we have input gain, bass, middle and treble and master volume. To the left hand side, of course, the input jack, we know that well. And on the right hand side, we have a line out and headphone jack. So we can plug in earphones and do some silent practice. Whilst we are looking at the controls, we can see that we have two LEDs. The one on the right hand side just lets us know that the combo is powered up. And the one near the gain control is a multifunction indicator. When we have signal going in, it will flash green. But on board ELF, we actually have a compressor. And as we start to push the gain up and up and up, we'll actually go over the threshold for when the compressor will start kicking in. And this is going to be brilliant because if you like a compressed sound, you can push the gain up and bring the master volume down, and you'll start to get that lovely controlled, slightly fatter, more punchy sound. But actually, if you don't want the compressor, then bring the gain control down, but bring the master up instead. So with a lower gain setting and a higher master setting, less compression, a higher gain control with a lower master for evening out the volume, you can have more compression. In my introduction, I found a really, really nice sweet spot around 12 o'clock on the input gain dial. And as you'll see, the compressor will start kicking in and give you a nice punchy and round sound. When we get to the gig, how does it sound? Well, let's find out. Today, I am miking up the front of the cabinet, so we shall have a listen to what's coming off the front of the cabinet. And I'm also running a DI. So we have a DI output on the back. So you could run this to, in my case, my recording software, or you could be running it to your front of house, PA, or whatever it might be, however you need to get your sound out. I am playing through a Spectre Euro 4 LT bass, and I'm gonna run both pickups full on, little tiny bit of bass boost, and the treble is flat. The controls on the back of the amp, we've got a bit of bass boost, some mid cut and a little treble cut. So not far off 12 o'clock. This is what it sounds like with finger style. You can hear a blend between the DI and the microphone there and it gives us a really, really nice rounded sound. This is what the bass sounds like with just the microphone on its own. And of course with the DI on its own. So we can hear that the speaker has a nice bit of color to it, a nice bit of punch and certainly those lovely mid-range frequencies are gonna help cut through in the mix, which when you have a smaller combo, I mean, we're fighting physics a little bit. We can't 
exactly get the sound out of a massive 8x10 cabinet, but it's really, really good to know that with this tonal colour, we can certainly get a lot of volume out of it. Okay, let's hear some more tones in. I am going to boost up the bass to just before three o'clock. I'm gonna pull the mids down to round about nine o'clock and I'm gonna bring the treble up to about 12 o'clock. This is a fairly bright bass, but of course I'm gonna slap it and we're gonna hear what it sounds like. Here we go. Grabbing the old plectrum, something similar. Super nice and twangy, and I can hear every note coming out nice and clearly. Just what we need when we need to hear ourselves on stage. Bringing the EQ round, let's pull the bass down a bit. I'm gonna go and push the mids, and I'm gonna pull the treble down, and I want that real sort of finger style sound. Let's see what that sounds like. Again, a nice adjustment to the sound there, and I've got a lovely finger style sound, which would be really, really lovely for a solo piece. There is obviously a wide range of sounds that we can get out of the combo. Anything from using a pick with the same sound. To nice chordal work. and the combo handles it very, very nicely. Now, of course, getting sounds out to our front of house or recording devices, we've got some connections around the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the combo around and we'll have a look, a closer look at those. Okay, around the back then. Everything we need for our extra connections is right here. On the left-hand side, we have our power input, and the standard IEC lead, so no rummaging around for proprietary connections here. Straight in, powered up, and off we go. Above the input power socket, we also have a switch to switch between, for example, UK and US voltage if you're taking this bad boy on tour with you. Very, very handy. And next to that, we have our power on off switch. To the right of that, a very useful inclusion, a switch that allows us to switch off the internal speaker when we're listening through earphones. Moving on, we have an external speaker connection. This is a super useful inclusion which allows the combo to be extended in a modular rig fashion. I mentioned earlier on that Trace Elliott provide an array of cabinets in their ELF range. So for example, if I need a bit more volume, a bit more low end, a bit more depth to my sound, then I can add the one by 10 inch speaker cabinet directly to this and have a neat looking rig. For information, when we look at this, the internal speaker is an eight ohm speaker. The 200 watt amp will give us about 130 watts into that eight ohm load. But by adding in another 8 ohm speaker, for example, the single 10 that I just mentioned, that'll bring the load down to 4 ohms and we'll get our 200 watts from the amp head. For getting our sound out to a wider audience, we have a direct injection output through an XLR socket and that has a ground lift function as well. Whilst we are around the back of the cabinet, we can also see that ELF 1x10 is a ported cabinet to help assist us with our low end. That's always going to be a good thing for us bassists. 
Wrapping up then, I think the Trace Elliot Elf range is a great modular setup. As I said earlier, it's brilliant for practicing at home, but also with the extension cabinets being able to get a bigger, deeper sound with exactly the same controls. You don't have to go for a completely different amplifier. I like that this combo should work well with piezo pickups because we've got a 10 megohm input. And the DI sound is really, really nice, exactly what I was expecting from a Trace Elliott rig. So some thumbs up there as well. As always, check out the written review accompanying this video in Bass Gear magazine. I'm also looking forward to bringing you some more Trace Elliott reviews very, very soon. So come back and check out those when you can. For now, though, thanks ever so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.